Dr. Seuss created unique characters, and since he did not draw reasonably real animals, he instead capitalized on his deficiencies by drawing his own versions of animals. In fact, Dr. Seuss stated, My animals look the way they do because I can't draw. Dr. Seuss said, Kids exaggerate the same way I do. They overlook things they cannot draw, and their pencils slip, and they get funny effects. I've learned to incorporate my pencil slips into my style. Dr. Seuss's books are also loved for their rhythm and repetition and because their characters are free of ethnicity. Theodore Seuss Geisel was also unique in his writing of children's books because he wrote books on grade level with subject matter that interested children of corresponding ages. Lorraine Lavort highlights the confidence Dr. Seuss instilled in new readers by saying, Part of this inspired confidence seems to be the fact that there is never, in the magical land of Seuss, a talking down to the young reader in words or through the art form, but rather both seem to have the ge that general hospitality that genuinely invites the reader and or listener to come on in and just make yourself at home. When Dr. Seuss began his mission to write a book that first graders would enjoy and which would challenge them intellectually, he was given a list of less than tw 225 words from William Spalding from the Houghton Mifflin pu Publishing House and told, write me a story that first graders can put down. Dr. Seuss struggled to find a subject for his book that complied with the list. In his first attempt, he wrote about a queen zebra, only to find out that the words queen and zebra were not on the list. Then he tried to tell the story of a bird, which he called a wing thing, but he could not write more than a sentence. Finally, The Cat in the Hat was published more than a year after the process started. The Cat in the Hat left a legacy, as stated by U.S. News. In the 50 years since The Cat in the Hat exploded onto onto the children's book scene. Theodore Seuss Geisel has become the central character in American literature, sharing the pantheon with the likes of Mark Twain and F. Scott Fitzgerald. Also, Geisel, along with his wife Helen and Phyllis Cerf, started the Enterprise Beginner's Books, through which he and other authors wrote children's books like The Cat in the Hat. He wrote many more best-selling beginner's books, including Hop on Pop, Box and Socks, Green Eggs and Ham, and One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. On March 2, 1904, Theodore Seuss Geisel was born to Theodore Robert Geisel and Henrietta Seuss Geisel. His grandfather, also known as Theodore Geisel, immigrated into the U.S. from Germany, settling in Springfield, Massachusetts. Geisel had a pleasant childhood. Although he was not very athletic, he had other hobbies that occupied his time. His room was littered with books. He often visited the Springfield Zoo because it was one of his favorite places. Even though he regularly saw the animals, he would draw them as funny-looking creatures and included them in his cartoons and stories. He earned friendships easily because of his easygoing ways, his love of laughing, and smiling. When his father was appointed to Springfield Park Board, he began to take Geisel on walks through the park and behind the scenes at the zoo. He would bring along his sketchbook and draw pictures of what he saw. His pictures never really looked like the actual animals. Geisel and his father also had a strong relationship. They would invent things, and many of their inventions found their ways into Geisel's books, like winding stairs or intricate looping. In 1921, Theodore Geisel started college at Dartmouth in Hanover, New Hampshire. He wanted to be an English major, so he often looked forward to English classes because he loved writing and literature. He wrote for the college's humor magazine, Jack O'Lantern. In his senior year, Ted became the editor-in-chief of the college's magazine. That's how he learned to use pseudonyms so people would not know which cartoons he drew. That's how Seuss first came to be used as my signature, said Dr. Seuss. The doctor was added later on. In June 1925, Ted finished his undergraduate at Dartmouth, and after Dartmouth, he went on to the University of Oxford. After Oxford, Ted went back home and was eager to start his career as a freelance writer. After one of his interviews, he was offered a staff position at a humor magazine called Judge. His first book opportunity came in 1931, when he was asked to illustrate a children's funny sayings book called Boners. After that, Ted decided he wanted to write and illustrate his own books. One day, Ted spoke the line, and that is a story no one can beat, and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street. He decided to write an entire story using that one rhyme. The original title of the story was, A Story That No One Can Beat. After Ted showed this book to 27 different publishers, he finally got an old friend to help him get his book published. The only change was the title. It became, and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street. Ted continued to make other books like 500 Hats of Bartholomew Cummins. He found inspiration in his books from various things and was known to create some of his best work when he was a little tired. 
Ted loved to remember names and often used them in his books. His very last book, Oh, the Places You'll Go, was a dedication to all of his Dartmouth friends. Theodore Seuss Geisel is familiar to many as Dr. Seuss, a man best known for his success in writing children's books. Anti-Hitler propaganda ideas and many other controversial topics were layered throughout his books. Before he began a serious career in writing children's books, Geisel's talent served the military as a cartoonist during World War II. He spent part of his life in the United States Army's Information and Education Division, where he created military training films. Dr. Seuss created Private Snafu, a cartoon character to be used during the war. His role was to show what to and not to do, and what can and will go wrong if directions are not properly followed. Not only did the cartoons teach soldiers what to and not to do, but they also depicted Japanese negatively with exaggerated features. Today, these illustrations would not be acceptable, but during the time, these pictures served to bring soldiers together against a common enemy while also instructing common knowledge. Seuss's focus later shifted to newspaper illustrations. Seuss is considered by many critics as a wartime political cartoonist due to his works published in the New York newspaper PM during this time. Seuss's illustrations of the Japanese during this time addressed stereotypes and exaggerated them to an extent. Illustrations also included Hitler, Mussolini, and Pierre Laval, who was one of the most notorious Nazi collaborators. Seuss was often referred to also as a propagandist during this time because of his drawings. However, Theodore Geisel did everything in his ability to aid the war effort. Theodore Geisel wrote many children's books with many different messages. Yertle the Turtle, The Sneetches, The Butterbook Battle, and The Lorax were some of Dr. Seuss's most well-known children's books that have had hidden meanings. Yertle the Turtle was one of Dr. Seuss's books that had hidden meanings. Seuss clearly portrays Yertle as a power-hungry turtle who keeps wanting more and more. He is never happy with the pond he rules. A brave turtle named Mac gets tired of Yertle and says to him, Your Majesty, please, I don't like to complain, but down here below we are feeling great pain. I know up on top you are seeing great sights, but down here at the bottom we too should have rights. We turtles can't sit in it. Our shells will all crack. Besides, we need food. We are starving. Yertle does not listen to Mac, so Mac decides to free all the turtles. The moral of the story is that everyone should be free and not be under the control of one person. Yertle the turtle also has hidden meanings about dictatorship. Yertle represents Hitler. He never puts anyone's feelings in front of his. He makes everyone suffer because he is never satisfied. Seuss was disappointed with the way Hitler and other powerful dictators and wanted to show people it was not our right to act like that. The Lorax is also one of Dr. Seuss's books with hidden meaning. There are a few different hidden messages in the Lorax. One is that people need to realize what the consequences of their actions are. Another his hidden message is people need to take care of the environment or it will not keep thriving. Another main hidden message in the Lorax is greed. The one slayer is a very greedy man and does not care for what he is doing to affect all others. All he cares about is his money. Another message in the book is pollution and mass production. The mass production of the needs leads to a lot of pollution. The pollution creates smog and makes the place unhealthy for creatures to live. Yertle the turtle the Sneetches, The Butterbook Battle, and The Lorax were some of Dr. Seuss's books with hidden meanings. Yertle the Turtle has hidden meanings about dictatorship and how people should be treated respectfully with careful concern. The Sneetches also had hidden meaning about how people should be treated equally, but focused more on race. The Butterbook Battle focused more on the Cold War and how people need to be careful with the weapons they make because of the consequences they have. The Lorax had hidden meanings about how pollution, mass production, and greed, and how people need to take care of their environment or it will all end up unhealthy and incapable of sustaining life.